Steam Crave Aroma Miser Light. Let's have a look. Hey guys, Ben here, back with another review. Today we are looking at this. This is the Aroma Miser Light RTA, a 23mm wide RTA, single coil design. Comes with a straight glass that's 3.5mm capacity and a bubble glass that is 4.5mm capacity. It's technically listed as a director lung and mouth to lung device. Comes with two different drip tips for director lung and mouth to lung. Has very adjustable airflow, which is why they think they've given it that name. And truth of the matter is, it's not really a mouth to lung tank. We'll come all the way back to that at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, it's listed as both. But really, it's a director lung tank. Available in stainless steel, black and gunmetal. Maybe more colours down the line. Let's go down low. Let's go straight down low so you can have a really good look at this. I'll put a build in it. I'll show you all the intricacies. I'll show you some of the troubles that I've had with this as well. It's not been a straightforward tank for me. Um, then we'll come back up top for pros and cons of which, like I say, there's a lot to talk about. So let's just crack on. Okay, guys, here we are down low with the Aroma Miser Steam Crave Light. RTA is the packaging, the restricted direct to lung and mouth to lung. I would forget that altogether if I was you. It's just direct to lung, single coil RTA in my opinion. Really cool packaging though. This is the stainless steel one. You get loads of spare O-rings. We'll come back to those as well. You get a spare straight glass, which is 3.5 mil capacity, and a spare bubble glass, which is 4.5 mil capacity. You get a direct to lung and a mouth to lung drip tip. Um, the mouth to lung is really just narrow and the direct to lung is a bit more expansive but they are 510 drip tips so this is it this is the stainless steel tank um, so I had issues with this tank uh, and this is why this one didn't get used in the end but you've got a standard 510 drip tip up here that goes on like that you've got top fill here just unscrew this knurl bit at the top and there is your top fill, no issues there. Don't over tighten that though when you put it back on. As soon as you start to get resistance there, that's fine, that's fine. Don't over tighten that, you'll run into trouble. You've got your airflow, now you've got a lot of choice on here. You've got wide, wide open like that, it's on both sides as well. Or you can narrow it down to there, that's how I like it. Or you can go even smaller like that if you want, or you can even just use these tiny, tiny holes. Um, so you can vape it with the tiny, tiny holes. But even if you do, it still finds a way to be direct to lung. You will notice while I'm doing this uh, that this is too loose. Uh, it's absolutely fine on my gunmetal one, but on this one, um, I ran into issues. When I started dismantling this tank, um, the O rings on this uh, airflow control, they came off and uh, they just won't go back on the spare ones won't go on either it's just way too fiddly and they just won't go on we'll come back to that in a bit so designed by BJSHI you got your serial number there as well you've got a protruding 510 pin but it's not super protruding so do be careful with hybrid stuff and mech stuff taking this part off here now what's supposed to happen here and it hasn't on this occasion but when you take this base piece off what's supposed to happen is this tank sec this uh, deck section here is meant to stay in like that almost like an innerkin sub tank you know like the old i subs and stuff um, so the deck stays in like that and then you just pull it out like that and uh, you are left with your deck and this is the deck section very very small it's actually very very small um, and it comes out completely like this which is uh, which has its positives and negatives there's a few real advantages to this uh, I'll talk about those up top but this is the deck section uh, so obviously you've got a post in there you drop a coil in there a lead in there you drop a lead in there and then you wick it into these two wick holes like that and uh, that is the deck section we'll come back into but come back to in a second so you've got this base piece that's what goes on the very bottom you've then got your rest of your tank section so you've got three parts here 
if I'm not mistaken. You've got three parts here. So that's your top bit. That's all pretty standard. No craziness there. Obviously, pull that glass off. You want to switch to the bubble glass. So this bottom section here, um, I strongly recommend not taking this apart. I, I, obviously, I was curious. I was reviewing it, etc. Leave all this section intact, and that will prevent you from having any issues with the airflow ring like I've had. Uh, keep all this bit together and don't mess about but it breaks down into three bits there's a top section there then this is this base section and then the airflow ring so that is the tank let's uh, let's try and uh, put a build in this and then I'll show you my one that I've already built up but these screws off. Obviously, there is no choice here um, in terms of the way you wrap your coil. A lot of pre made coils are wrapped under wrapped, and uh, a lot are over wrapped. So, the important bit here is that uh, if you're using a coil winder, what you want to do is you want to wrap over the top, like I have here, not, uh, not backwards like that. So, over the top like that is how you want to do it. Um, so that you can put this lead here and this lead here like that and it sits on top like that now this coils slightly too beefy for this job but we're gonna pursue with it anyway I would have done one less wraps perhaps and this lead here is slightly too long let's have another go now it's worth getting these coils the right height before you crack on but there you go basically basically that there, there you go that's how you put your coil on like this that is how that works you just stick it on top like that about that sort of height happy days um, right so what we need to do now is check the resistance and uh, warm it up a little bit so we will just pop it on a mold now this piece here it does it does just go in like a, like a 510 I know all the other components aren't attached but uh, it still works mean let's warm it up a bit what's it coming out at 0.2 ish That's a bit better. Right, so you've got your coil warmed up, you've got your coil in place. Wicking is is quite important on this, the, the old wicking. What you want to do is get a nice fluffy strand of cotton and slide into this coil's DMs. back just find a nice place for this and then we are literally cutting to the edge of this tiny deck sounds insane doesn't it but uh, let's give it a little bit more leeway on that side but that's what you got to do I'm sorry if uh, you thought that was wasteful with the con but there we go and now sometimes you might thin these out sometimes you might brush these up and stuff what I'm doing with this is I'm fluffing them up. I want these fluffy like that. So you get to a point where you've got it looking like this. And that is when you're placing it over the top of these channels. Boom and boom. So it's lovely and fluffy all the way down and then neatly placed over both of these channels are you seeing that okay there we go there we go happy days then all you would do is uh, just give this a bit of juice get it going oh, it's gonna get messy like that and then you want to push it back into here. So just need to light the inner and subtanks. You need to line it up so the outy bits are uh, in the grooves like that. Get your base piece. Let's 
<laughs> flow ring being loose really makes this all a bit finicky. There we go, that's nice and snug. You want to make it so it's nice and looks flush along there. There's no O-ring sticking out or anything. Nice and flush through there. Rrr. Place that back on there. Push this in. I think the glass got loose from me arsing with it as well. But there we go, all back together like that. Then you would open this, stick your juice in, and give it a good old vape. So that is the stainless steel one. This is the gunmetal one that I've been using a lot. And uh, as you can see, this is the mouth to lung drip tip that comes with it. I've just been using it in detail because it's a it's a neat it's a snugger fit this drip tip. And as you can see, no issues with this airflow control. Nice and tight, nice and tight that one. No issues with that one. So that is the uh, gunmetal or black one. I think it's gunmetal. Uh, let's go up top, pros and cons of this tank. Let's go. Okay, guys, that was the Aromamizer light down low. Like I said, there's a lot. There's a lot to go through there. So it took a little bit longer than normal down low, but there is a lot of bits and bats to this. A lot of intricacies, some troubles that I've had with mine, a couple of design things and all that. So, yeah, a big build section down low. <sighs> So this tank, I've had, I had a lot of trouble out of the gate with this tank. I just want to say at the very beginning, if you're a Steam Crave fan, if you're a Steam Crave fan, you've been eagerly waiting for this tank. They've been talking about it for a long time. You're not going to be disappointed with the actual vape. The actual vape is stellar. The flavour is the best I've had for a, from a direct to lung single coil tank ever. Absolutely ever. It's a, such a nice vape. I'm only at 44 watts and flavour and clouds are absolutely tremendous. It's actually a really small deck and a really small chamber on top of that. And the airflow is so smooth and lovely. It's a it is really tasty vape. Really, really lovely vape. But I have had a lot of little niggly issues. So the first thing I did when I got it was I took that stainless steel tank out of the box. The second I started dismantling it, I realised how many bits there were to this. Uh, it's quite... An intricate tank is quite a lot of bits. Now, when uh, Smovesto do a light, when they do say the K Fun light, when they say light, they mean simplified. So the K Fun light 2019, it doesn't have top fill. It doesn't have, uh, you know, a lot of things. It's as minimal parts as possible. It's as simplistic as possible and basic as possible. And that's what they mean by light. That is clearly not what steam crave mean when they say light this is a very intricate tank a lot of moving parts a lot of parts on here took the stainless steel one apart first thing that happened were the o-rings on the airflow adjustment ring came off uh, they were already hanging off and they just sort of dropped off as it as i took it apart then i found when i found the spare ones in the bag that it's virtually impossible to put those on it's virtually impossible to get those o-rings on that airflow ring um i've tried for ages to get them on really really fiddly really really messing around and i can't get it so i can't repair that stainless steel one so it's it's unusable as it is it's unusable so uh, it was a really bad first thing i had with it really bad first thing so got the gunmetal one out and that was absolutely fine however with the gunmetal one and this would be my advice when you're messing with this tank, when you're building it, when you're doing anything with it, the only thing you really should be messing with is this knurled bit at the bottom. Just unscrew that, pull the deck out, and just leave all the other components together. The only time you want to take those apart is if you want to change to the bubble glass. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's quite an intricate tank. It's quite a lot going on, and I did have that. It will just be me. It will just be, you know, I just got a very unlucky with the stainless steel one. But the O-rings, once those O-rings on the airflow ring came off, they were not going back on. Way too fiddly to get back on. They're really flimsy, and they're bigger than the actual airflow rings, like I showed you down low. Real, real messy. Real, real mess. So... So there was that. So the stainless steel one was a bit of a disaster for me. It's a, it'll be a one-off. It won't be loads of them like that. Just mine, I guess. But uh, yeah, it was a faff. And what it really says is, you know, there's a lot, a lot of components to this tank. There's a lot of things going on. Then I built it. 
then I built it and wicked it and my first wicking seemed to be going really well but then started to flood and I hadn't used enough cotton. It's a very generous wicking tank, it's a very fast wicking tank. You don't want long strips of cotton in there, you need to cut it to the o-rings uh, in the very small deck, cut it to the o-rings and just put them over the top but fluff out the wicks, fluff out the wicks and then place them on top, don't try and thin them down to make them smaller, fluff them up and place them on top and you'll have no wicking problems, a very fast wicking tank, um, yeah so don't, don't strip and thin your cotton down, fluff it up and then place it over the top and don't put them down into the channels, you don't need to do that either. So. Yeah, so then I had wicking issues uh, while I was messing around in, and learning the ropes with this tank and then I got it nailed. And once you've got it nailed, it's an absolutely lovely, lovely tank. The airflow choice is just vast. I'm only, I've only got it on this little strip here on both sides. There's a whole, I would say there's another 50% available, that's fully open. Yeah, so you've got absolutely loads of airflow cho choices. The other thing, as I alluded to at the beginning, they've listed this as a DTL and MTL tank, mouth to lung tank. Now, I get why they've done that, because they do have mouth to lung airflow options available on here, and they do have a mouth to lung drip tip that comes with it um, as well, but I can't get it to mouth to lung. This doesn't mouth to lung, this tank. It's way too much air coming in and going out it's just i can't get a, a true tight mouth to lung drawer on here if you're a mouth to lung vapor i don't recommend this tank at all if like me you're a 25 to 50 60 watt single coil rta user definitely do check out this tank the other slight issue issue i had as well when i was getting all set up and messing with it and stuff the drip tip on the gunmetal one the DTL drip tip was way too loose so I've actually gone with the direct to lung drip tip and uh, it's a much better fit and it's working absolutely fine. So I have had a few little niggly issues with this tank but the flavour and vapour quality is so good that really it surpasses all of those little niggles. Really really nice vape. It's a really nice vape, it's a really nice looking tank, it works really well as soon as you nail that wick in Great flavor, great clouds. It's a super, super tank. The other slight advice I would give if you get in this tank, you've got this tank, is don't over tighten the top cap, the air, the juice flow. No, not juice flow control, the top fill cap. At the top here of the tank, don't over tighten that. There's no need to over tighten that. As soon as it's a bit tight, that's enough. Don't over screw it or else it'll get stuck on there. That's not a negative of this tank, it's just some advice and it's the same for a lot of RTAs out there. Um, overall I think it's absolutely tremendous vape, I really really like it. I had a few issues but overall super super vape. That tiny deck is really really uh, really tasty. The other thing is, and now I've got this spare stainless steel one, the, the deck design where you pull out the deck piece means I can wick up and build up the spare deck and I can take that say on holiday or to vape me and I have a spare build ready to pop straight in the tank whenever I want so if they sold those deck sections separately that would be a really nice additional thing if it was you know three or four pounds to get an extra one of those that would be a real bonus uh, it'd be really handy to have a spare build ready to go all the time the other thing they can do is they could bring out different variations of that deck and you can buy, say like a velocity version and you just pop that in instead. So that's a very clever design, it works very well. When you first get the tank, pulling that out is quite tight, be careful with that, but once you've done it out a couple of times, it's, it's, it's just the right amount of fit. And the bottom cap screws on and tightens it up anyway, so it's all perfect. Really, really nice vape. A few little fiddly intricacies, but a very, 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 very nice vape from Steam Crave, the Aromizer Light RTA. Really like the vape on this. Let me know what you think in the comments, like and subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.